G'day guys and gal. You've probably noticed, or maybe you haven't, because you really don't give a shit, but I was away for the week. I went up north to go visit my family and get some sunshine, then I decided to hit the snow and get a cheeky ski in. I was feeling pretty exhausted in the weeks beforehand, so it was nice to have a holiday. The only issue was that because I ended up more or less binge drinking every night while I was away, I've come back home feeling even more cooked than before I left. I was on holiday, and somehow I made a negative profit on sleep and rest. Hell yeah. As such, the first video back needed to be something digestible, easy to talk about, and to be frank, a little bit brain dead. So definitely not going to do anything with the Alpha Legion. Hence, I present the top 5 chapter masters in Warhammer 40k. This list will be quite general, and it will take into factor the chapter masters power, their feats, impact on the setting, and all round badassery. There are so many sick chapter masters out there, so whilst it's tough narrowing down to 5, these 5 are very worthy. Let's get into it. First up on this legendary list, we have the High Marshal of the Black Templars, which you know is just a douchey way of saying chapter master. Helbrecht. You know this list is going to be fucking good when the first person on it is the leader of weaponized autism. Now Helbrecht is a monster in combat, like he stabbed the demon prince to death with a sword. But that isn't why we love him, no. It's his supreme tactical genius and legendary naval commanding abilities which make him so impactful. He's somehow managed to channel his mind-boggling amounts of zeal and desire to crusade into something very, very productive and intelligent. This madman, and I say that with affection, has crusaded when none dare crusade. He invaded the Ghoul Stars, which is a massive no-fly zone, and was able to nearly wipe out the Xenos that live there. For context, even the Tyranids avoid flying through the Ghoul Stars, so this was a huge flex. Helbrecht would go on to command the Loyalist armies at Armageddon, and he drove off the fuck huge wah that invaded it before facing his greatest challenge yet, Imhotek the Stormlord. The Stormlord is the greatest Necron commander in existence other than the Silent King, hence when the two legends collided, they were evenly matched. The battle came down to a duel between Helbrecht and Imatek, however Necrons, especially named ones, have bullshit hacks, hence despite cleaving Imatek to shreds multiple times, the Necron Lord kept insta-healing, and eventually Helbrecht collapsed due to his wounds. Imatek then teabagged the down High Marshal before cutting off his hand in a huge display of bad manners. Helbrecht swore vengeance. And vengeance he would get. The angry white black man caught Imotech's fleet off guard, and he instantly engaged in hectic teleportation boarding. Whilst Imotech was shocked at such a fucking primitive display of tactics, he was even more shocked to see it was working. Hordes of mega pissed off black Templars led by the super pissed off Helbrecht stormed Imotech's capital ship and ravaged everything in their path. Imotech was like, fuck this, and he teleported to safety. Helbrecht was obviously mad about that, however he did fly Imatek's favourite ship into a nearby sun, which makes them pretty even. What's the saying? A hand for a capital ship? Sure. The next nasty lad on this list is Tybros the Red Wake, who, to be honest, could easily be number one due to his sheer girth, but we just haven't seen enough of him in the lore yet. Tybros is fucking huge. He is the biggest space marine to ever live. Imagine the child of Shaquille O'Neal in The Rock, then pump that child full of HGH since birth, then give that child Gene Seed, then imagine that Gene Seed mutates and makes him even bigger, and you would have Tyberus. Terminator armor is too small for him. He has to augment his Terminator armor with Drenor armor in order for it to fit. He also uses lightning claws with a chainsaw attachment, which are also power fists. Oh my god. Like what? Tyberos is the chapter master of the Space Sharks, who are a terrifying chapter of marines that seem to be derived from a mix of Night Lord and Raven Guard Gene Seed. They stalk the voids of space, and they only come out when it's time to put a bitch in their place. Tybros himself is an unstoppable force. Any battlefield he enters is an instant win for the Space Sharks, as he tears through bitches like the gigantic shark man he is. Speaking of gigantic shark men, the latest and holy shit the biggest major kill mini is now live for pre-orders. That's right, Shark Daddy is here, and he ain't fucking around. This model is very, very big. He towers over all the other major kill minis, which are already quite chunky. Don't even get me started on how he looks next to a Primaris. If you think he looks oddly similar to other models or characters, then get your fucking eyes checked. Shark Daddy ain't breaking no trademarks. Price is in Australian dollars, and it's a bit higher than the MK models because he takes fucking ages to print, and I can only fit one on per build plate as opposed to the two or three I can usually manage. 
He's such a bitch to produce that we're going to have to launch with a limited amount of models available. So pre-ordering is the best way to guarantee you'll get one. Yeah, he's so big. Down to our third greatest chapter master, we have Logan Grimnar, chapter master of the Space Wolves. Logan seems to defy all logic. He is able to sprint in Terminator armor, something that is supposed to be technically impossible, and he uses an extremely heretical and wildly overpowered Cornite axe. Despite his temperament, rage, track record of killing Inquisitors and Grey Knights, and the fact that he uses a Chaos weapon, this dude is still extremely loyalist. Like, he ticks every box there is to tick for a Space Marine to fall, yet he hasn't even displayed the most minor of heretical symptoms. His will is unbreakable, and he's an absolute beast in combat. This dude banished Magnus the Red back to the warp with one big ass axe swing, and he straight up murdered a shitload of Grey Knights for being a bunch of dicks. For context, Grey Knights are considered the creme de la creme of Space Marines, and are the dudes you call when a demon Primarch needs to get banished. Maybe they should just call Logan. Just like how Helbrecht is considered the greatest Space Marine naval commander alive, Logan is considered the greatest Space Marine warrior alive, and he takes absolutely zero shit from anyone. And when I say anyone, I mean it. Krakens, the Inquisition, and even Primarchs have gone up against Logan and talk huge shit, and each of them has felt the wrath of his boot to their scrotum. I genuinely don't think he's ever lost a battle, and at 700 years old, that's a lot of fucking battles. Now to our number two spot, we have Asterian Malak, the Space Spartan and Chapter Master of the Minotaurs. Although the Imperium will never admit it, there are some Loyalist chapters that have traded Gene Seed in them. Ironically, most of these heretical Loyalist chapters turn out to be extremely effective tools for the Imperium, and seem to be very resistant to chaos. The Minotaurs are Iron Warrior successes, and it shows. These warriors are hard as fuck, and they kill without hesitation. None are more brutal as their chapter master, Mr. Malak. Mr. Malak is shrouded in mystery, and there are a lot of fun theories about who he is and why he's so overpowered. To give some context on how powerful he is, when the Custodes and the Minotaurs had a bit of a uh, misunderstanding and nearly came to all-out war, a powerful named Custodes looked at Malak and he genuinely wasn't sure if he could take him. This is a big deal because A, Custodes are always very sure of themselves, and B, a Custodes can wipe the floor with an Astartes, like they are little more than an aborted fetus. There are dozens of instances in the lore of a Custodes carving through dozens of Astartes with next to no effort. The times when a Custodes does die to an Astartes always cost the Astartes dearly. So for a named, super powerful Custodes to be unsure about his ability to take out a Space Marine is a huge deal. So what makes Malak so strong? Well, there are a couple theories. One theory is that he is actually a Custodes himself, or at least has some kind of Custodes augments in him. This is unlikely though, and it's only a theory due to him using what looks like a Guardian Spear. My favourite theory, however, is that he has died multiple times. However, through some sneaky technology that the High Lords have, they are able to re-upload his consciousness into a new body. Hence, he has multiple lifetimes of intense combat experience, which is why he's so powerful. His body is also loaded with augments of the highest caliber, which would help. Yeah, there's a reason why the High Lords use the Minotaurs as their personal bulldozer. I would hate to be on Malak's bad side, or even good side. Fuck being friends with Space Leonidas. Now, to our number one spot, which you probably have already guessed, and if you haven't, that just means you're retarded. Dante, the chapter master of the Blood Angels, and the guy that just wants to fucking die. At 1,500 years old, Dante is one of the oldest living space marines in the galaxy, and he is so sick of this shit. He has seen and fought every single horror in existence. There is multiple in-law moments of him fighting Dark Elder, Elder, Necrons, Orcs, Chaos, and most prominently, Tyranids. He has seen thousands of his brothers die horrific deaths, and he hates the fact that he's a little space vampire. Dante is old, withered, and tired. He wants to rest, permanently. But he doesn't, and that's what makes him awesome. Only in death does duty end, and Dante will never voluntarily abandon his duty. See, Old May got a prophecy that one day he would save the Emperor's life, or whatever's left of it. Hence all thoughts of suicide, which is you know most of what he thinks about, have been shelved until he achieves his legendary task. His willpower is so strong that he's also stopped himself from drinking blood, hence he has mastered the Red Thirst something that very few Blood Angels do. What's even cooler is that before he was a Space Marine, he was a sick, lanky child, and everything he has accomplished, he has done so through sheer effort. No genetic lottery or been in the right place at the right time, just pure hustle. When the Tyranids Leroy Jenkins had bugged to wipe out the Blood Angels, 
the super old and tired Dante led the defense and even came face to face with the Swarm Lord. Now the Swarm Lord is supposed to be the Alpha Tyranid, but in reality, he's just a punching bag for named Space Marines. Hence when Dante and the Swarm Lord fought, the Swarm Lord decided to roar at Dante instead of killing him, hence allowing Dante to blow his face off with a special fuck you gun. The victory at Baal wasn't all Dante is known for though. He banished Scarbrand by shoving an axe in his face, and he has clapped heretics on more worlds than anyone else. It's not like he's careful either. The dude deep strikes in like a motherfucker and he only uses short range weaponry. This man has been jetpacking into enemy lines with an axe and a pistol for 1,500 years and he is still alive. No wonder why he's tired. Recently, Gilliman made Dante commander of like, half the galaxy, which I think he did to try be nice and to cheer Dante up, but I think it just made Dante feel more dead inside. Like bruh, let the man deep strike, it's the only thing that makes him happy. Stop trying to make him responsible for the lives of a metric fucktillion people. There are plenty more dope ass chapter masters out there, and I'd love for you guys and gals to comment down your favourite chapter master and why below. As for me, well I'm just gonna go drink some oat milk and get some sleep. This raging holiday hangover is killing me. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Where only one dollar per month give you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more masterful content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.